Ali, and today we're going to be reviewing The Girl Who Lived. This book took me a long time to read because it was a horror book and I just started on this. It took me a long time, even though it was only 322 pages, and it took me a long time. So, the author of this is Christopher Grayson, and I wanted to read a little bit about him. From the mind of the Wall Street Journal best-selling author Christopher Grayson comes a story with twists and turns that takes the reader to the edge of madness. The girl who lived should come with a warning label. Once you start reading, you won't be able to start, stop. So he was a best-selling author, and he still writes until now. This book is a series, so I am going to review the whole series. So. Let's get started because I've been really, really excited to review this book. First, let's talk about her history, her parents, and things like that. She had a mom and a dad and a sister, and she has a best friend and her mom. These are the main characters here right now. Their dad and mom had been divorced, so his dad was going to marry her best friend's mom. And she was totally fine with that because it was her best friend they were talking about. And when that was happening, they were going for camping one day, 10 years ago, and everybody had come on one spot. They did not realize that a killer was there, um, a murderer. They came and killed her father, her sister, her friend, and her friend's mom and she and she's the only one that ran away her mom was like okay i'm going to write a book about this because i am emotionally emotionally sad so she wrote the book about this and from mom then everybody knew about her life and she did not like that she felt like it was peeking into her privacy and now after 10 years, she's been sent to mental hospitals because everybody thinks her story is not true. She says that there's a rat-faced man that killed her, her friends. And nobody believes her and they think she's going mad and crazy. So they put her in a mental hospital and she doesn't know what to do there. She's been stuck in mental hospitals for 10 years now and her mom gets her out for some reason after 10 years and she's like you could have got me out like so long ago and now you get me out after 10 years yeah then she said that you're going to have to live by yourself and since she's been inside a lot she's never come out for 10 years so she's like how do I fit in with the people and she has to go through groups, to go to groups, and and she also said that she has to stop her alcoholism because she was drinking drugs. But that night she had her apartment and phone and it was super, super overwhelming. So she went to drink again when her mom told her not to just like a few hours ago. And then, and that night she saw the rat faced man. She tried telling the cops again but they wouldn't listen because she was drunk and they thought they she just thought she just saw something but an fbi agent named henry comes and says that she's the only one that believes her in this story and she's going to help the case but after two days no no information from her and she's like okay i'm going to take the case into my own hands she puts up posters everywhere, tell me if you look at this guy, and everybody now is point, pinpointing her back, and Henry's like, I'm finally coming here to tell you some information, and you do this, because she'd been out of the state looking for him, and it was a little mixed up then. Then, after a week, there was still no more information from her after that. So she thought of taking the case into her own hands again. But this time, she learned that her mom was the one who sent the serial killer 
to kill everyone because she didn't like her dad and she wanted to marry another person. So she killed everybody, she, but she missed her. She missed Faith. And she was like, how could you do this to me? Her mom was the nicest person in this book. But at the end, she, she just wanted her book to go viral and her husband to die. That's what she wanted to do all these years. And that's why she got her out after 10 years in mental hospitals. This was a lot to think about at the end. Their mother being the one who was the actual serial killer. But they shot her and she died. So then Faith, the main character, had a normal life. And it was way easy after that, and she didn't go into alcoholism again. So that's it for this video, guys. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Bye!